Hello, I'm Sherry. Today I want to share about the rental income. So, what is the income tax rate that imposed to the rental income in Malaysia? So, for the people that receive this rental income, right, we will see whether they are tax resident in Malaysia or non tax resident. So how to identify whether they are tax resident or non-tax resident? First, we would like to know whether this person is stay in Malaysia more than 183 days or not. If he stay in Malaysia more than 183 days, then he or she will consider as a tax resident. If considered tax resident, then he or she will need to submit Borang B or Borang BE. For those who stay in Malaysia less than 183 days, then they are considered, considered non-resident. Then they, they need to submit Borang M. So I understand some of the people say, hey, I'm Malaysian. It's just that I already uh, migrate to other country like I'm now working in Singapore or I'm working in uh, in London but I have property in Malaysia just that I asked my mom I asked my relative help me to collect the money and the money still come into my Malaysia bank account so whether I need to pay income tax or not of course you need because you're considered non-resident but the money still going in into your Malaysia bank account that's, that's why you are still entitled to pay the rental income for the income tax so now you know whether you are tax resident or non-tax resident what are the expenses that you can be deducted from this rental income and we have to identify the property that you rent out is first time rent out or it's just a renewal basis when i mention renewal right meaning this property might change another tenant it's not continuous maybe change another uh, tenant so this is also considered renewal it's not the first time rent out so why i say like that because normally when calculate for the net rental income right you can deduct few expenses for example assessment fee quick rent insurance the fire insurance for the property and then the expenses incurred uh, on the rent collection okay uh, then the expenses uh, incurred for the rent renewal and then the expenses are uh, incurred for the repair and property and maintenance or the maintenance fee and the sinking fund that you pay for the JMB okay so when I mentioned expenses incurred on the rent collection right meaning let's say the agent commission when you uh, rent out to other party you find agent help you to advertise so this advertising cost the legal fees on the tenancy all this is claimable but is subject to this property is not first time to rent out if the property is first time to rent out right then uh, some of the of the expenses is not claimable at all for example the cost of advertising the property the legal fees that prepare the rental agreement the stamp duty and property agent commission these four expenses is considered initial expenses so this initial expenses cannot be deducted from the rental income for first time rent out so a lot of people make making mistakes for this so please take note for this so after calculate all your rental income and deduct all the expenses right then you you get the net incomes based on this net, net income right you will be considered chargeable income in your uh, uh, tax submission this is the income that you need to declare in your income tax so how much you will entitle to pay so you will depends if you are tax resident which you submit the borang b or borang be then you will refer back to the uh, the schedule the tax bracket let's say uh, more than fifty thousand to seventy thousand is how much then more than seventy thousand to one hundred thousand is how much is the income tax rates you are based on the tax resident rate but if let's say you are non-tax resident let's say you are just an investor from overseas resident or you are the malaysian but you already migrate to somewhere you are not in malaysia 
So then this is a fixed uh, income tax rate. You need to pay 30% for the income tax rate for all the rental income that you need to submit. So for the tax resident who is always the Malaysian, how you justify yourself to submit borang B or borang BE? How to identify? So normally if let's say you only have the pure uh, rental income, you don't have other income anymore. So then you need to submit borang BE or you're working adult with uh, other uh, company with receiving EA meaning you are full employment uh, uh, employee but you have property rent out then you need to submit your borang BE as well but if let's say you uh, have uh, other source of uh, business income like so proprietorship partnership and so on then in this case you will declare your borang BE so for all the property, right, it will be uh, classified as commercial property or residential property. So some people might ask, I am rent out my condominium, so I don't need to declare because it's just a residential, it's not a commercial uh, property. Can I do so? No. If let's say the residential property that you are not going to stay there but you rent out as an investment purpose, you should declare this rental income as part of your income in income tax as well. I hope everyone can learn from what I'm sharing today. Thank you for watching.